speaking of the ending, uh, the ending that did come out, you know, uh, yeah. to me is pretty, they leave it pretty ambiguous as far as what Utrid is doing. He's looking uh, left to Valhalla and he's looking right yeah. at you and, and Bevenber and, and thinking about living on. Uh, what, what do you think? What's the ending for you? I guess you said for me, Uhtred lives. I, I think <laughs> Colby, do you think Uhtred lives or do you think? Uh, I, I feel like I, I, when I, when I see him look at you in Ooh. that final scene, I sort of interpret that, that as him sort of like, it's okay to let go because there's me, there's my legacy. That's sort of how I looked at it. And it was like, okay, I can move on now, but I think they do a good job of leaving it a little bit up in, for interpretation there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I wouldn't want to say definitively what mm -hmm. I think because that is like yeah like you say the beauty for me is that people can make up their own minds and i think sure. often the best stories are left open-ended like that because because then you have your perfect happy ending you know whatever you think is right i also agree with uh your idea colby that the um the look yeah. could be could be taken as like a because because it's it's not just the look it's the it's his reaction after that shot of of me um right. he's tearing up in a way that like you know yeah breaks my heart thinking about it really yeah. it's it's yeah. and he's so brilliant in that scene but yeah obviously i'd like to think that he lives yeah that's what i want to think it's, too, it's you know? so much fun to discuss <laughs> that ending and the more i i've seen it the more cryptic it is yeah because the, we get a lot of the fun thing about having this podcast we hear a lot of people's point of views on it and okay, a lot of people will be like, well, he didn't have his sword, so he couldn't die. But then, like, he's reaching under oh, his cloak. So maybe he was. And then someone's like, yeah. oh, but he wasn't a king, so he can't die. And then somebody pointed out, like, when they zoom out, there's, like, a, a crown of candles over his head. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, that's cool. Like, they really, it's, it was, like, intense. fantastic. I mean, what Ed and the whole team did was was amazing. And another thing, I, I don't know whether this you've already discussed this with other mm -hmm. people, but that scene was um, shot with so much coverage. You know, there, there are obviously the shots of me and there are shots of Mark and Arnas and, and everyone. Right. Um, the editing is the most interesting for me okay. in terms of all that because, you know, you had lots of shots that weren't used. And so they've clearly gone in the edit and decided what, you know, they probably discussed it at great length. All of these yeah. things you're talking about, the crown candles, all these stuff, because I don't think the candles were on set. I think they were added mm. in. Okay. So, you know, okay. that's a conscious decision um yeah there's a lot in the editing like i didn't even realize that when um ethel's I, I obviously did it on the day but right when cavern says long live the king and everyone says long live the king and then right. like a little bit and then for some reason it goes to osbert and he's like a little bit out of sync with everyone and like, what's that about someone's clearly chosen all of these things it's amazing so we've got to just keep doing our detective work i think totally yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> what was it like shooting that that final scene then too when uh, Uhtred is acknowledging Ethelstan as king of all England now and, and giving over his lands. You know, were you also just kind of like, dad, why? Why are you giving up my stuff? You know, <laughs> but like... yeah, well, maybe that's why they put that shot in there. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> yeah, I should have been brought into ADR going, what? <laughs> oh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was an emotional scene, I think. You know, I was very conscious for the whole shoot that I was stepping into someone else's world, and mm -hmm. it's it, it was the, it's the same for that scene. I think Alex is obviously doing um, what he's got to do to get into the zone, and um, and Harry as well. So there was a there was a really nice atmosphere on set. Really, it felt like everyone was giving it the respect that the scene deserved, and mm -hmm. giving it space to sort of breathe. And people would like take their time. Really, you know. It's it's an incredible it's an incredible scene, obviously, and I think what speaks volumes as well is that the original cut of the film was much longer. Right, I it was it. sort of brought down. Yeah, mm -hmm. so but they kept that scene. You know, it, they gave the the space for that to really land. Good. And that's how it felt on the day. You know, it was like we had a whole day of just this one scene because we knew we had to get it right. Um, yeah. But but for me personally, I think it was it was more about like like letting the others. I knew what I had to do. Right. Like I just wanted to like let the others have like close up their story because it Absolutely. is you know, Uhtred and the boys and Ethelstan. You all killed it, and you have that cool line where you say, um, "Bevan Burrs is ours again," and 
we will now rebuild it from stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which... And then obviously seeing the shot at the end is cool. Yeah, um, yeah. I think there was I think there was a, another line in there that ended up getting cut, but it was Bevan Burr is ours again. And we will rebuild in stone. And then there was a line that got cut, and I'm glad it got cut because uh I don't think it would have fit in the scene, but okay. um it said Bevan Burr is ours again, and we will rebuild in stone. And then Osbert like tears up a little bit and says, "You must fight to live to see it." Um, oh. So we so we we got rid of that. And obviously, the next line is Elaine saying, um, "There's so much to live for." So yeah, I think that's right, sort so. of fitting for, you know, the open ending. I, mm. I don't know. I would have liked that line though too. I think that would have been cool to have in. And yeah. I think yeah, but. But yeah, you I know, want Steve just wants him to be alive so bad. <laughs> yeah. He's like, <laughs> yeah. He's like well, finding every excuse. Yeah, it could completely. be. It I mean, could be. I mean, who knows? It's who, who knows. The the other thing is that the um the, you know, the scenes we shot at the end where like I said, like they didn't make it like Osbert carrying Serpent's Breath and Ethelstan sat by a fire, which didn't make it into the film. And there was another one. Can't forget. I feel like I'm giving away someone. I feel like someone okay. is watching me screaming and pulling their heads out. <laughs> I don't. I doubt it. No, no, no. It all goes on the screen. Chronicles. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but the idea that was that those scenes were like far in the future. So, okay. c- kind of like whether he lives or dies, like like you've said, the legacy is secure. Ethelstan goes on to become the best king in medieval England. And, you know, yeah. but I was saying, I was like, I do, I wish they kind of would have done something like that because um, we, we kind of just saw Ethelstan become king and, mm. and then uh, he was kind of a dick most of the movie. Okay. And it's just like, it would have been great to have like, at least like seen like a quick glimpse of him. Just like a quick one, yeah. Like yeah. maybe going through the crowd, you know, a gray beard and something. Everyone's like, yeah, that's good. He's yeah. a good guy. <laughs> you know yeah i mean it's there, there's it, yeah. i think that that says a lot about the world though isn't it is that you could have you know i want to see what happens to finn and citric i want to see no, yeah Blue and edmund like it's obviously we're there to serve utrid's story at the end of the day yeah. um and i think it it's a rather fitting ending but i completely agree that like now we need a new series exactly we need united spin-offs Kingdom, and we yeah. need yeah. united yeah. Kingdom. i mean honestly yeah. i still enjoyed the ending but yeah. Uh, yeah, but there, uh, you know, I, I, I've, I've mentioned this a few times before. The, the show has become more successful pretty much every season it's come out, right? It's more yeah. popular. Um, after the movie, though, they did leave the ambiguous ending. But whether they decided to do a movie after or, or I even think, you know, if they wanted to, they could do movies that take place maybe before and just like their own little short yeah. story kind of thing. A lot of Netflix. great characters, you know, that you um, can do with. would, would that be something you'd be interested in doing now? Come back as Osbert and absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd love a go at it with, you know, a, a fixed spine. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and uh, to be able to twist on a horse. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it, it's definitely got scope for it. Hasn't it? It's you've got such a, Good. a depth of characters and, you know, you could even have like the Scottish Chronicles, where you follow, you know, Constantine right. and, and Don Donal. Is that how you? Donal. Yeah. yeah, I think they yeah, maybe Don- say Donal. I don't know if they pronounce the M in it. I think it's yeah. I th- I th- yeah, I think it depends on which region you whether sure, you pronounce sure. it or not. But oh, yeah. Um, yeah, there's so much, isn't there? Oh, like yeah. Sick Trigger could have like a prequel spin-off. Or I definitely or want Constantine yeah. spin-off cool. though. 